Hi everyone, welcome back to Cody's Lab. So I just got done filming my 1 million subscriber special, and as such, I have quite a bit of cesium left over. And I need to dispose of it, because uh, storing cesium for long periods of time under mineral oil is not a super good idea. And also, I think I'm going to take advantage of this to feed my obsession with super heavy liquids and make some cesium tungstate. So, without further ado, let's take some of the cesium and drop it into a small amount of water to make cesium hydroxide. <laughs> this jar has completely sealed itself. This cesium ate up all the oxygen in there. Got a bit of cesium. This is mixed with like mineral oil that appears to have saponified, even though I don't think mineral oil saponifies. Well, let's put it in the water. Okay, well, I'm just going to keep putting little bits of cesium into the water until I've gotten rid of all of these cesium chunks that I need to get rid of. <laughs> it's kind of fun. Okay, I think that's the last of it. I don't have any more metallic cesium sitting around. I traded it in for a dirty solution of cesium hydroxide. I'm just going to transfer this mixture over into a smaller container so that I can separate out the mineral oil from it. Now that I've removed the mineral oil, I'm left with my cesium hydroxide solution. It's a little more dirty than I'd like, but is probably decently adequate. So now I'm going to neutralize the extremely strong base with some tungstic acid. Uh, tungstic acid forms very heavy salts and since I'm mixing it with cesium, a very heavy atom, I should make a well, an extra heavy salt. If you haven't already guessed, tungstic acid is made from tungsten, a very heavy metal. In fact, pure tungsten is about the same density as gold. Okay, I think I've just about reached the balance point where it stopped dissolving. I don't want to add too much more because it could cause some extra reactions that I don't really want to see. I'd rather the solution remain close to neutral as I can. So now I'm going to run this solution through a filter and into a larger beaker so that I can evaporate off most of the water. So I've now cooked down the solution to only a small portion of its original volume. Now I'm going to transfer this into a test tube and we're going to see what I can float with it. So there's the solution filtered as much as I could. It's still kind of a brown color, but it definitely feels very heavy. So let's take a piece of broken glass here. This is some soda lime glass. Let's see if it'll float. It's definitely up there in the top floating. Look at that, right there. I cannot get it to sink. So that means the solution is heavier than soda lime glass. That's cool. Let's see what else I can float in it. How about some fish pebbles? Now these are quartzite, so they have a density of 2.5, a very common value in Earth's crust. Quartzite pebble versus my cesium tungstate solution. And it floats. Look at that. This liquid is dense enough to literally float rock. This is so cool. I mean, mercury is dense enough to float rock too, but you can't see through mercury. So right here is the bead of aluminum that I made back in my making aluminum video. Now this metal has a density of 2.7 grams per cubic centimeter. Let's see if it'll float on this fluid. Seems to initially. Let's see if I can knock it down. Because I know you can sometimes get aluminum to float on water. due to surface tension, but that is definitely floating. That is metal floating on a liquid. And this is a very common metal. <laughs> that is crazy. Here is some fluorite, calcium fluoride mineral, with a density of around 3.1 grams per cubic centimeter. And it slowly sinks. Okay, so that means we're pretty close. Let's try some anhydrite. Anhydrate is anhydrous uh, calcium sulfate or gypsum with no water 
and uh, this has a density of about 2.97 and that one appears to float. So that gets our uh, density of this fluid down to about 3. Fluorite sinks and hydrite floats. By now you guys have probably figured out that this liquid could be very useful for separating minerals. Let's say I have a bunch of minerals right here. One of these grains is a diamond, one is glass, and the other three are gravel. So I put the sample into the liquid, give it a little bit of a shake, and you can see the diamond sank to the bottom, whereas everything else floated. And this is exactly what's used in diamond mining in order to separate diamonds from gravel. This would have been really useful back when I was mining diamonds from the road. But there you go. The cesium tungstate is toxic, but it's also fairly easy to recycle. All I gotta do is wash the cesium tungstate off with water, and then boil the water down to get the heavy liquid back. Which means it is very useful for us geologists in separating minerals. It's not quite so useful for drilling fluid, even though it would be kind of ideal, because it would provide lots of pressure to hold the hole open while you're drilling and actually float the rock chips out of the hole. But again, the toxicity makes it so that cesium formate, which is much less toxic, is more desirable. Anyway, I'm thinking of making a series of videos exploring these heavy liquids. And perhaps uh, eventually I'll make like a liquid stack over a hundred liquids tall. <laughs> I think that'd be really cool, don't you? Well, tell me what you think of that. And hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time.